everybody and welcome back to another exciting hiking video where we hike in this beautiful weather and a gorgeous location. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike and what I do is point of view hiking videos where you get to see what I see and while we go along, I tell a story. And those stories could be uh, a story about something I've experienced, a funny story, a ghost story, a story of inspiration, a motivational story, and sometimes a story that teaches a life lesson. I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And every Wednesday, I do a special video where I don't tell a story. Instead, I let you listen to the sights and sounds of what's around me. If you have not subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, do it now. You know that button, that big red button with the white letters, it's calling your name, it's saying, Hey, hey you, subscribe. Hit it, hit me right now, subscribe right here. Yeah, yeah, you see me? Right here, subscribe. And if you like the video too, make sure you you smack that like button. Not smash it, smack it. Smack that like button if you like this video. Just smack it, smack it really hard. And um, also when you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification. That way you can be notified when there is a new video. Even though I told you it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But still, you know, you might forget. You might forget. Today's story takes place in 1994. And at the time, and I've talked about this before, I had my own local television show, and I was in high school. And it was a Saturday, and we had just finished taping our episode for the day. And I had planned, after the, the taping, to go see the movie Mrs. Doubtfire in theaters. Now, I had been trying to see this movie for two months. It had come out in 1993, but I kept having all these delays. There were snowstorms, there was uh, babysitting I had to do, you name it, some kind of delay. And it just kept pushing it off. And I was really concerned that I was going to miss seeing this movie in theaters. So on this night, I had it all planned out. My friend and I were going to go see it. We finished filming the show. The cast and crew left, and it was just me and my friend. And the, the movie wasn't going to be playing until like 8 p.m. or so. So we had a couple of hours. So we went down to my, my, um, my office slash room, which was right next to my studio. And we put on the TV, and we're watching a movie. And the movie was called Miracle Beach. And it's actually a, a kind of a nonsense type 90s comedy movie. But... It's a great memory from my childhood, and I therefore liked the movie. And it still, uh, was starring Amy Dolan, so I had a huge crush on at the time. I just thought she was like the prettiest thing. And it's a pretty funny movie. But it again, it, it is one of those mindless 90s type comedies. You know, it, it was a movie that at the time, I don't even know if it did well in theaters at all, but I discovered it late at night on HBO. And it was one of those type of movies that you would find like late at night on HBO or Cinemax. Or as we nicknamed it, Skinemax. Now it happens to be a very cold February night. And there's a bit of chill in the air. And I'm, I'm waiting with anticipation of being able to leave and go see Mrs. Doubtfire. I've been wanting to see it for so long, so I just, I'm excited about it. But I'm enjoying Miracle Beach. That's when I start hearing all of this noise going on upstairs. I'm hearing a lot of walking. I'm hearing a lot of voices. I'm like, what the hell's going on up there? And that's when my friend says, I'll go check. So he goes up there and he's gone for a bit. And then he comes back down and he goes, you do not want to go up there. I'm like, what? He goes, don't go up there. I'm like, what the hell's going on? He's like, I don't know what the hell's going on, but there are a bunch of young teenagers. They are drunk and they're throwing up everywhere. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, as soon as I walked upstairs, this kid fell on the floor and he just started throwing up and now he's sleeping in it. I'm like, what? So what had happened was my younger brothers, and I, I don't know exactly what happened, but apparently they were at a friend's house up the street and at the time, like, my youngest brother was only, like, 13. The other one would have been maybe 16, maybe 17. I was 18, so he was 16. And 
they went to some kid's house where they all started drinking, underage drinking. And then they decided to go from house to house and ransack everybody's liquor cabinet and eventually made their way to my house. And now they're all up upstairs. My, 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 um, one of my brothers, the, 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 uh, 16 year old, he's up in his bedroom and he's plastered and a bunch of kids are hanging out there. The other one, the 13 year old is drunk, but he's going around cleaning up all the puke and trying to keep order and keep people under control, which I found to be kind of funny. He was the youngest one, but he was kind of being the, you know, trying to be the, the responsible one while he wasn't responsible because he was a 13 year old who was drunk. And meanwhile, I'm like, what the hell is this? I don't even want to have anything to do with this. I just want to go see the movie. So I'm like, screw this shit. We're going to leave. That's what suddenly this giant kid we went to school with. And when I say giant, I mean giant. He was like nine feet tall, eight inches. Nine feet tall, eight inches. Okay, maybe not that tall, but he had to have been over seven feet. And he comes down and he can barely get into the basement. He's like, his head's practically touching the rafters. And he just comes down. He's like, hey, Mike. Hey, how you doing? What do you live down here? I'm like, yeah. This is so cool, man. Wow, you're like a high school student with his own bachelor pad. This is awesome, man. Wow, what are you watching? Oh, Miracle Beach. Oh, man, that's a funny movie. Hey, I want to watch it with you guys. It's up. It's crazy up there, man. There's like people throwing up everywhere, man. They're all acting crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm going to stay here. Okay, whatever. So now he's down there. So now, like, he's so nice that I don't want to say, hey, man, could you leave? Because I'm leaving to go see a movie and I don't want you down here. So I I didn't say anything, and I keep thinking, like, I'm going to miss the movie. I'm not going to be able to see Mrs. Doubtfire, damn it. So then he's like, at some point, maybe a half hour later, he's like, hey, man, I'm going to go upstairs and check on things, okay? This is really fun, man. You're a cool dude. This was fun hanging out down here. The Miracle Beach, that was a fun movie. He gets up and he smacks his head into the ceiling. Oh, man. Whoa, I gotta watch out. My friend loses it. He's laughing his ass off. I feel bad because, like, the dude forgot how tall he was. And he hits the ceiling. So he leaves. Next thing you know, I hear, like, a puke going on upstairs. And I just hear, <laughs> So it is just, like, insanity. And now there's, like, yelling and screaming. Next thing I know, a bunch of kids come running down. Mike! We need you, Mike. And I'm just like, oh, fuck. So I go upstairs. My brother, the 16-year-old, we lived in a colonial. And his bedroom was on the, the top floor. So two stories up. Technically three, if you consider the basement where I am. And he jumped out the window. Jumped out the window. So they're all freaking out. They're like, he jumped out the window, man. He jumped out the window. And he was gone. See, here's the thing. We had a really bad winter that year. There was like 12 feet of snow out there. So when he jumped, he landed in the snow. If there was no snow there, it probably would have been really bad. But he landed in the snow. It was like landing in a giant pillow. And then he just ran off. He ran through like all these feet of snow and disappeared behind my house where there are hiking trails. And he starts going up the, the hiking trails. And the hiking trail splits at one point. One point it goes up the mountain, which is a very steep and difficult hike. Or it could go the other direction, which is all flat land. It kind of goes along where some old farms used to be. So two of his friends take off while the others stay behind. And they take off to go find him. Meanwhile... I have to call the police because he's missing and it's dangerous and he could get killed out there. So I call the police. At the same time, my little sister calls my father who lives on the other side of town. And my father ends up showing up before the police did. And guess what? My father is drunk. He's plastered. 
So he doesn't even know where the driveway is. He ends up parking on the front lawn. And then he's stumbling all over the place. Hey, Mike, where's your brother? What's going on? He ran out in the back somewhere. A couple of his friends are out there trying to get him. Okay, well, let's go try to find them. I'm like, well, I call the police. They should be here soon. And they can get, you know, they have search equipment and everything. Okay, well, the police are here. So the police show up. And the officer's like, okay, so what happened? We didn't say anybody was drunk. We didn't want to bring that up. We just said, well, you know, he broke up with his girlfriend and he was upset. So he jumped out of the, the top story window and just ran off back here. And the cop's like, ah, yeah, I guess that, that, that would happen, you know. He's probably really depressed about it. All right, you know. And so the cop's like, so what's going on now? And we're like, yeah, his friends ran out there. Like, all right, well, let's give them a little bit of time to see if they, they bring him back. If they don't, we'll, we'll get back there. Meanwhile, my father, who's drunk, is falling in the snow. He can't barely stand up straight. And what surprised me most is the cop didn't notice. Or the cop thought he lived there and it didn't matter because he was home. Which he wasn't. He was not home. He didn't live with us. So he's like... Walking through the snow, like, you look at him, like, Rrr. So anyways, the friends did indeed find him and brought him back. But what was creepy is, you want to know how they found him? They followed the bear tracks that were alongside his tracks. Yeah, there was a bear out there. And so they were very concerned that the bear had gotten him and was dragging him away. Thankfully, that didn't happen. He never saw the bear. He may have actually been following the bear tracks and not the other way around, but the fact is, he was following bear tracks. So thankfully, they found him. But it didn't really end on a, on a happy note, like after we found him and we're like, oh, everything's great. Because then my drunk father takes me aside and blames me for the whole thing. I had nothing to do with any of it. I was filming a TV show. And then I was going to see Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm not responsible for them. I'm not their dad. I'm not their mom. So that was actually when I stopped talking to my father. I had enough. To blame me for, what, for their actions, I was like, that's it. I'm done. I will not speak to this guy again. And my relationship with him has never been the same. There was a brief period of time... Uh, about 10 years ago when I was talking to him and now it's been seven years and I will never speak to him again but that's a story that I don't need to tell but guess what I didn't get to see Mrs. Doubtfire I missed Mrs. Doubtfire that's what I wanted I wanted to see Mrs. Doubtfire and then the following week I finally got to see it the following week I saw, and it was well worth the wait, I laughed. Robin Williams was fantastic. It is now probably in my top ten list of, as favorite movies. Now, at the time, it was frustrating. You know, all these kids throwing up everywhere, drinking and acting like nuts. My brother taking off and running out for the mountains. The cop having to be called. My drunk father showing up, blaming me for everything. And then not being able to see Mrs. Doubtfire like I had planned. But then eventually when I look back at it, to me it is the most 90s teen memory I have. Just a bunch of wild teens having a crazy night. It was like a scene out of American Pie. And I look at it, back at it now. Nobody got hurt. Everything was fine. And uh, I actually have a good memory about it. You know, I look back at it with fondness. And guess what? A week later, I got to see Mrs. Doubtfire. And it was worth the wait. Because I enjoyed it. It was funny. Robin Williams was awesome. And it is in my top ten list of favorite movies. So there you go. And now, a shameless plug. That's right, it's time for another shameless plug by me, where I shamelessly plug something that I have personally created shamelessly. Why? Because I have no shame. Today I present MikeBurkPhotography.com. Photography has been a passion of mine for most of my life, ever since I got my first camera at seven years old. And I have focused on taking beautiful landscapes, photos of the forest, 
the ocean, the sunsets, winter and fall, gorgeous images of colorful flowers, and on the occasion, wildlife. If you're looking for the perfect print to hang on your wall, then check out MikeBurkPhotography.com today. I have plenty of options. If you're looking for something just for autumn or something for winter, you'll find it. And all of my prints have many different options to choose from. You can get it on paper print, acrylic, canvas, metal print, and even frame. So check out Mike Burke Photography today and find the most perfect print for your wall. MikeBurkPhotography.com And that was my shameless plug, and I'm going to plug it shamelessly one more time. That's Mike Burke Photography. There, I have no shame. I have no shame.